On today's show, we're going to make a tablecloth made from pieces of eight. It's time to get out your fabric and try some projects for fall or Halloween. Let's take a look at this tablecloth that I have. As the pieces started to go together, it reminded me of candy corn. And so I was on a quest. I had to find fabric that had candy corn in it. And those were the colors that I decided to use in my project. So I picked a, a background like this so it would be contrasting to the candy corn colors. And then for the candy corn itself, I picked the shade of orange, the yellow, and the white. So let's take a look at how we're going to make this fun project. First of all, we're going to start with 12 inch squares of our background color. Right here, I have them one already cut. And to make it easier to do our next step, we're going to fold it in fourths. And this will give us the marks we need. And just like this, in fourths, make sure the edges line up. And press it so that we have a really sharp crease. You'll need to see that crease. And so you want to make as many of these as you need for the quilt you're making. Now, I want to do finished edges to my pieces. Let's take a look here. And you can see that the edges are turned under and stitched. You also could do this with raw edges. And we'll take a look at some other quilts that have raw edges uh, later on in the show. All right, so we have our piece this way. Then we need to take pieces that are an inch larger than the finished shape we want. So first of all, we're going to go to our eight inch octagon. This is what we want to make. To do that, I'm going to take what I call a pattern tracing fabric or a very, very sheer interfacing. We don't want to add any bulk, but it will enable us to turn the edges under. So what I've done is taken the pattern tracing fabric, I cut that Remember I said an inch larger than the octagon? So we want an eight inch octagon. We're going to cut our fabric, our orange, and our tracing fabric into a nine inch piece. So it's an inch larger. And then I'm going to draw on this piece using some kind of a marking pencil. I'm going to draw around the outside of the eight inch octagon. Now this is a pencil that if the mark does show, you can erase it. We have an eraser at the other end. And that's important because you don't want the lines to show. Most of the time I don't have to do that because the stitching will cover it. So here I have my eight inch. Then I also want to draw inside that opening, which is really a six inch octagon. And what we're doing is drawing cutting lines and sewing lines. All right, so here is what we have. If I put it here, I think you can see the lines better. We're going to take this to the sewing machine, and I've already done that for you, and sew around the outside edge with thread that matches the fabric that we've cut into the square. Uh, the next step is to trim this and we'll just cut it off, leaving, oh, somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And we'll just cut one more side. And here you can see the piece that I've already cut. The next step is to cut out this six inch octagon. So what we have looks like a donut. All right. 
So the stitching around the outside, cutting the inside. Now we're ready to turn it right side out. And we have a nice finished edge on our octagon. And I pay particular attention to the corners, so I usually do those first. And then the sides just fall into place. So we'll turn it. This is where having the very lightweight interfacing or pattern tracing fabric makes it easy to do. If you work with a heavier interfacing, you'll have to trim those corners. Okay, the next step is to press our piece. And now we're ready to put this onto our backing fabric that we pressed into quarters. So we have this piece here. We'll open it up. And we want to put our pieces, what I call, on point. That means a point is going to line up here at each of the creases. And here are the side creases. Oh, now see this corner? I rem remember I said to pay particular attention to the corners because they need to be out so you have a nice corner. There, we've taken care of that one. So we line up the creases with the points on all four creases and then pin it in place. I'm going to put a pin in all four places and then we'll be ready to stitch this onto our background. Now you want to use matching thread for this because the thread will show a little bit. Well, let's just fix that corner there. There we go. If you put the pins in the corners of the octagon, then you're really sure that that corner is done right because it just gives you a second chance to check it. Now I'm ready to sew. We have to set up our machine. I have a decorative foot on the machine. I have matching thread. And I want to uh, set it up for a blanket stitch. And so what I do is uh, hit what looks like a shirt on my machine. That takes me to different uh, venues. And we're going to be doing an applique. So I'll push that button. And then three stitches come up that I can choose from to applique. I'm going to choose the blanket stitch. Now it's important that you start sewing in the right place. And that'll become obvious when we go to the uh, a step down the road. We want to start exactly where we have a pin. And with the blanket stitch, you're going to take three or four stitches on the background fabric. And then it will jump over and take a stitch onto the octagon. So you just have to watch for a few stitches. I want the needle down in my fabric to stop. Okay, make sure that you're off the fabric. And then it bites and then it's just a matter of holding that piece on and steering. And when you get to a corner, we just stop when we're off the fabric. Get that down, there we go, and turn. Sometimes it looks like you've come just one stitch too far. And the way that you can tell if you're in the right place, you'll be going in this direction. When you turn it, the needle should be just off the fabric, ready to go on the next side. So let's just take a few more stitches here. You can go as fast as you are comfortable going. But be sure that, you know, you're, the majority of the stitches are not on the orange fabric. So I'll stitch until I come off the fabric again, just past it, turn it to make sure it's lined up where I want it to be. And that's going along pretty well. We'll just do the one more corner, come off the fabric, turn it and continue stitching. And remember, we started at the crease. It doesn't matter which crease you start at. 
Okay, I'm not going to finish that one because I already have one finished that you can see. So we'll go to our next size octagon. Let's take a look at this up close. Here is the stitching. As you can see, it's hardly visible. Okay, sometimes it takes a little practice to get it so it's not all on the top fabric and, and on the background, but I know you can do it. All right, we do the yellow, the next octagon the same way. It's a six inch octagon, so we cut our fabric one inch larger, seven inches into a seven inch square, seven inch square of our interfacing or uh, tracing fabric. So it right sides together, turn it, and we have a piece like this. Now when we go to sew this, this is called a twisted octagon. We started on point. This would be a regular one. We want it this way. Just like this. Well, we don't really have any lines to line it up with. So if you take your octagon shape and lay it on top of this piece with and turn it so that the lines on it are lined up with the creases on the background. We're forgetting the orange pieces even here. We're lining up the lines here with the creases and then put our piece in here. We remove this and now we can pin this in place Again, where the creases are on the background. Let's get a different pin here. So the pin lines up with the creases because that's how we know where we're going to start stitching. And you would want to switch to a yellow thread to do this. Let's just put a few more pins in. Again, lining them up with the creases. That's why those creases are so important on the background. Now, you could have, if you want to reduce the bulk, sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. If it's something that's going to be washed a lot, I eliminate this next step. But if you want to reduce the bulk, then what you want to do is trim the background fabric from behind the orange octagon. But it, it weakens it a little bit. So you have to trade off. If you, want, if you don't mind a little extra bulk, but want it, something really strong that can be thrown in the washer and dryer a lot, you can leave it there or you can remove it. So we would go ahead, stitch the same way on the yellow, but start at the crease always start at the crease and sew around. All right, now with the white octagon that we're putting on top, it's a little bit different. So let me just show you that. Here we have our finished pieces. They're going to be four inches. I don't know if you can see it, but if you take a look at this, you can see some of those marks because it's white fabric. So I had to come up with a technique that wouldn't do that. So anytime you have a very light fabric, especially a white or an off-white, you might want to think about how you can mark it and still not have the mark show. So what I've done is taken a piece of tearaway. That means it tears away easily. And I've marked any lines I need on this piece right here the outside and the inside. And you can use scraps. You can see one corner's already cut off here, as long as I have enough so I can stitch. Then I take my square. Remember, we cut it one inch larger. I want a four inch octagon. This is cut five inches. I still have my pattern tracing fabric or lightweight interfacing here. And now what I'm going to do is take the tear away and put it on top. And now we'll stitch through that. And well, let's just do just a few stitches so you can see how that will work. 
and I want a straight stitch for this. So we'll just stitch. I'm using the orange thread so you can really see it. One more. Stop with the needle down in. Of course, you would use a white thread, I would hope, if you're using white fabric. You know, the minute I say something like that, I, I, I think of some of you out there are saying, oh, if I use that orange thread, though, think of the contrast. A little bit of it would show, and go for it. It's your design. The minute somebody says it shouldn't be done this way, some of you come up with a way to do it. And that's what makes quilting fun, when you put yourself into it. Okay, we'll just finish sewing around here. Now remember, all the marks were done on the tearaway. Okay, we'll take that out. And now what we do is just tear away. And, and from the inside also, just sort of grab it. You, you just want the one layer and tear it. Now you have no marks on either the white fabric or on the pattern tracing fabric. Just tear it right away. Trim your seam allowance. Cut out the inside of the, the pattern tracing fabric. And when you turn it, then you have a perfect octagon with no marks showing on the white fabric. Okay, let's take a look at what we'll do with this piece now. We're just assuming I've already sewn this. How's this piece going to go? Well, we don't want it straight. We want it to go the opposite direction. So you find the piece of your octagon shape that lines up with the piece you just put on. But we're going to turn it again partial turn. Now we're lining up these lines again with the crease. Let me just get that out of there on all four sides. And so now this piece goes in like this. And we pin it at the creases. And again, you're going to use a white thread this time if your fabric is white. And start stitching again at the crease line. With this project, always at the crease line. OK, and we pin it here. So four pins is usually enough. Use your blanket stitch again, stitch around it. When your piece is finished, it will look like this. Now, don't press it. You know, that we, sometimes we press a lot, sometimes we don't. If I warn you not to press, don't press, because we need these crease lines that we have here. And if you press the whole block, you won't have those. Now what I'm going to do is cut this, these into squares. And as I said, we need the crease lines. So I'm going to line up my ruler with the point of the largest octagon with the crease line, but also as a secondary uh, guide. If you look here at the yellow octagon, it comes right to this line on the ruler. So that tells me, and it's two inches, or I'm sorry, three inches, because that's a six inch octagon. So that tells me we're right in the middle. So we're going to cut our piece. but leave it right together there. I just wanted to check to make sure it was cut all the way through. We do the same thing here. Line up the points of the orange, the white, the crease lines, and our three inch line is right on the edge of the yellow. Just hold your ruler and cut right across. Now what we have are four blocks that we can use in our uh, tablecloth. Now this tablecloth has five blocks in a row, five blocks down, so there are 25 used in the center. If you come out here and look, I have one in each corner, so that's 29 that I need. Well, every time we cut a piece, we have four. So you'll see that we've got uh, a few extras around, and that's okay. You'll find something to do with them. All right, let's take a look at how we're going to put these into rows. 
This is a neat project because it is perfect for the pointless friends I have out there that don't like to match points. Because we'll be putting these in rows, let's just see where they fit, then like this. Then you'll notice that's repeated again. And it's repeated in every row. So I'm going to sew them into groups of two. And we don't need any matching on these first two. They're going to go just like this. I don't need to pin them together other than to know what side I'm going to sew them on. So I'll just put a pin here, line them up when I get to the sewing machine. So we have that piece. Then we go to the same group again. So we'll just be chaining from one to the other. There are five rows in our tablecloth, and in each row we need two of those sets. So we'll cut or we'll sew together ten pieces. So let me go ahead and do that. I have my machine set for a straight stitch, a quarter inch foot. We'll just line up the edges. Okay, right, we'll stitch at a quarter of an inch. And all we have to do is line up the top and the bottom. Then we go to the next two pieces, just the same, and, and that's what chain stitching is all about. So we would do this for 10 sets. Okay, now let's take a look at how we would lay those back in this way, and then we'd put them together, groups of two, and then each row would need just one single one added. Now look here. The yellow will probably match, but you know what? Each one of these pieces looks like an individual piece of candy corn. So if it doesn't line up perfectly, don't worry about it. That's not what the eye will see. But in most cases, it will line up that way uh, just by itself. The other two pieces, the top and the bottom, the orange and white, there's no way they're going to match. Don't try it. So this, that's why it's great for the pointless people. So we'll put these two pieces together, matching them at the top. Take a few stitches, hold the bottom together, matching. And so, and that's the way the rows are put together for this quilt. And let's take a look at this piece. Now it may not look like it, but every row in this tablecloth is made exactly the same way. So what you want to do is complete your rows of five. I have them here. Let's see, we'll get it the way it is showing in the quilt. This one, the next row is made exactly the same way, but then it will be flipped around. So, because we want seam allowances going in opposite directions, and all the rows are the same, and we'll flip them, that means we're going to press all the seam allowances in the same direction. Every row makes it easier. And it doesn't really matter which way they go. Just all the same. And we want to press from the right side of the fabric, so I'm going to do what I call rolling. Just roll the fabric up. Let the iron come across it just once, and your seam allowances will all be pressed in the direction you want them to be. So every row is done the same way. All right, so we have our rows, and that's the way that one goes. Remember, now we flip it, and guess what? Other than these cross seams right here, which should line up pretty easily, uh, there's no other matching that needs to be done. And let's just take a look at how we'll put the rows together. Let's see, be sure you know which one's your top one. Okay, this was my top, and this way. Now when I sew it, I will be starting here, and this seam allowance is going to be toward the needle, which means these will just butt together, and that's the easiest kind of matching you can do. Okay, let's take a look at the rest of the quilt. I decided to use my candy corn border uh, fabric 
for a narrow border. And then how did I decide on the wide border? Well, I had some pieces of candy corn left. And so I cut my border strip the same width and sewed the borders on, did an envelope style finish, right sides together with the back and the top and sewed it and turned it right side out. My tablecloth is finished. I hope you enjoyed this project and be sure and join me on my next show when I'll bring you some more quilting ideas. For information on today's main demonstration, call 1-800-248-K. That's 1-800-248-5293. Or write to us at Kay's Quilting Friends, Post Office Box 456, West Branch, Michigan, 48661. Please remember to specify the program number. Hayes Quilting Friends is brought to you in part by Genomi America, Brandies, Sulky of America, and Oddlight Technology. Our thanks for joining us for this edition of Kay's Quilting Friends. We hope the ideas shared with you in this program will make your quilting more enjoyable. Please join us again on the next Kay's Quilting Friends.